paper I'm going to be talking about today is explaining that there are antimicrobial activity within the antiplatelet drug ticagrelor. So hi, my name is Chris. Let's do some science. So the paper I'm referring to was released May 8th, 2019. That's 16 days from today when I'm filming this. And this paper, the idea stemmed from the original Plato trial in the 2009 paper um, by Lars Wallenstein up in Uppsala, Sweden, that was showing the effects of ticagrelor and clopidogrel in patients who had ACS events and tracking cardio and cerebrovascular deaths 12 months after. That paper showed that ticagrelor was superior. And that paper also showed that, or that paper, but that actual Plato trial showed that actually patients that were in the ticagrelor arm actually had less infection-related deaths. Why is that? Well, we're going to get into it right now with this research letter uh, sent off to JAMA Cardiology. So in this paper, they were well aware of the effects of ticagrelor, but they wanted to understand what types of anti, what, what's the antimicrobial effect of ticagrelor. So is it gram-positives, gram-negatives? So they looked at some species, particularly gram-positives. The bacterial lines that they were interested in was methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus, MSSA, MRSA. Uh, you have your glycopeptide intermediate staph aureus, they looked at VRE, they looked at strep agalactic, agalactic baby, and they did e callus. And they compared that to two drugs that also are used to treat MRSA. Those were daptomycin and vancomycin. And of course, there is a long list of drugs that we know as whatever, if you're a resident or attending or a third year like myself in medical school, that if you want to treat MRSA, there is a list of IV antibiotics and there's also a list of oral antibiotics. And the list for this is for the IV is you got your vancomycin, you got your daptomycin, you got your linazolid, you got your tigacycline, and then you got your quinopristin. For your orals though, you start off with your TMPSMX and you get your clindamycin, your doxy or tetracycline, your linazolid rifampin, and then somewhere down the line is a new drug called tygobactin. But where does... Um, Ticagrelor fit into this. So what this paper did is they looked at these things called kill t time kill curves, and time kill curves monitor a wide range of bacterial growths um, and deaths over a wide range of antimicrobial concentrations. And this commonly, what from what I'm aware of, is one of the first steps in understanding the PKPD modalities for antimicrobials. So let's get to the paper. This research letter kind of has one main figure that I want to discuss, and that is looking at MRSA, uh, MRSE, and VRE. And what we're doing is we're looking at when we initially have the inoculation and we're seeing how the CFUs, colony forming units of that bacteria progress um, as their exposure to um, the certain antimicrobial. And what they found, which is like what the, like the line that you probably read online, either read it or whatever, that it actually, at least in regards to this paper, the ticagrelor was superior to vancomycin in treating and reducing colony forming units in these time kill curves. It wasn't actually superior to daptomycin, but still that is really interesting in regards to ticagrelor. And the one thing I do want to bring up about this, though, is that in the discussion, so this is a huge factor, but in the discussion, um, this was all done in mice. This was not done in humans, so that's number one. The second thing also was that bacterial cytokine concentrations are not reached systemically when you're going to give someone just um, some ticagrelor. So, but their thought was that potentially, and we're going to see as the year goes on, so right now they're doing research on this right now, which is pretty exciting, but because the ticagrelor binds to platelets because it binds to the GP2B3A receptor, or it binds to the P2Y12 receptor, stopping G2B2B3A, but it binds to that P2Y12 receptor, so it's actually bound on platelets. So it actually could be platelet-dense antibiotics. So though it's not systemic, maybe platelets can combine to certain areas and then actually can reduce the amount, or it can actually concentrate the amount of antibiotic in certain areas. So... This is pretty interesting in general. So all in all, this paper showed that ticagrelor does have benefits and actually can reduce the CFUs and also can reduce the biofilm formation in MRSA, 
MRSE, as well as VRE, which are all three different types of strains of bacteria that have been addressed by WHO as needing imminent research for treatments. So that's pretty much it for the paper. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll make sure to make out new papers and figure out what the progress is in regarding to being used as an antimicrobial. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.